Dr. Natalie Callender from the University of Wisconsin, and I'm here today to talk about smoldering myeloma trials uh, from ASCO. And we just heard some very exciting information about a couple of issues with smoldering myeloma. One was just how are we going to risk stratify better? That is, try to figure out who is going to have more active smoldering myeloma. There, there was a nice presentation using data from 2004 patients going back to 2004. And they basically ended up using a, a, a system that's been out since about 2018 that's called the 2220 system. And that means if a person has more than 20% plasma cells in a bone marrow, if their M spike is above two grams, and if their free light chain ratio is about t above 20, that that can portend for a higher risk of progression, somewhere around 50% in four years. So we also heard from Dr. Sagar Laniel on behalf of ECOG about his trial, the largest so far in smoldering, which was a randomized trial uh, using lenalidomide, 25 milligrams, days one through 21 of a 28-day cycle until progression versus observation. And uh, this study, actually, we've been waiting a long time, but it was shut down in October last year because it met its endpoint, which was progression-free survival and progression-free survival was superior at each one-year analysis at years one, two, and three uh, by a very good margin, so that the conclusion that Dr. Laniel gave today is that probably all high-risk smoldering patients should get something, some sort of treatment, but preferably they're on a trial. So that leads me to the new trial that we've opened up in ECOG called the DETER trial, and that is the stands for daratumumab to enhance the therapeutic effectiveness of lenalidomide in smoldering myeloma. Now, you may not know this, but when you're planning a clinical trial, you have to do this many years in advance before you actually know what some of the results are gonna be. And of course, we're quite pleased to see that Dr. Laniel's trial is positive. So along with his trial and the Spanish trial that came out a few years ago, we think there's enough evidence to say there should be no more observation in any of these trials. So our trial is going to use uh, daratumumab and dexamethasone, but we're gonna to try to blend the best parts of each of the previous two studies. So first we're going to use lenalidomide, but we're going to limit it to two years. And we're also going to use dexamethasone as the Spanish did, but we're going to limit that as well. So after six months, de dexamethasone goes down to 40 milligrams a week. And then after another six months, it just, it goes down, excuse me, to 20 milligrams a week. And then after another six months, it just stops altogether. And we're looking at a couple of very exciting endpoints like MRD, minimal residual disease. We're also doing an imaging component. We're looking at PET scans because there's some data that if your PET scan is abnormal, not with bone lesions, but just somehow abnormal, that also can lead to a higher risk of progression of your myeloma. So this study is going to be right now for high-risk patients that we define as anybody with 10% plasma cells or, or and more than three grams of monoclonal protein or some high-risk changes in chromosomes, uh, specifically 414 amplification or extra 1Q and a P53 deletion, or they have to have an abnormal FLC ratio greater than eight or less than 1.25. So that study's open and we're just waiting for sites to come on board. And hopefully we'll be accrued in about four years, maybe sooner now with these exciting results from today. We started developing the study several years ago, so it is IV right now. Based on the information we heard today, it might change over to sub-Q. I think we're waiting to see if that's gonna happen. And I should mention for, for anybody who's tuning in about this study, all of the drugs are provided, which is, I think is a very nice. So the lenalidomide is completely provided, as is the DARA.